how do you summarize long documents for free using a Python program? Yes, this is today's topic. I am using Hugging Face. I'm importing the model for summarization. It is a BART pre-trained CNN model from Facebook. I get its tokenizer too. These lines will download the model. Note that the next time you run the program, the models will not be downloaded anymore, but rather the program will use the saved version of the model that was downloaded from the first execution of the program. Anyway, our model is ready now. The corresponding tokenizer is ready too. Here is the summarize function. It takes a piece of text and generates a summary of that text using the pre-trained model. I will use a second parameter, max summary length, to get an indication from the user about what the user expects as the maximum summary length. The tokenizer.input method is used to convert the input text into a summary that can be fed into the model. It converts the text into a list of integers representing each token in the text. The return tensor is equal to pt. Argument specifies that the data should be returned as a PyTorch tensor. The max length equal to 1024 and truncation equal to true. Arguments specify that the input text should be truncated to a maximum length of 1024 tokens. The model.generate method is used to generate the summary text. The inputs tensor created in the previous step is passed as input to the model. The max length argument specifies the maximum length of the generated summary. The min length argument specifies the minimum length of the generated summary. Here I have set the minimum length to one fifth of the maximum summary length. You can change it based on your application. The length penalty argument is a hyperparameter that controls the length of the generated output. A higher value encourages the model to generate longer sequences. A value of 1.0 would neither encourage nor discourage the longer sequences. A value lesser than 1 encourages shorter sequences. The numbeams argument specifies the number of beams to use for beam search, which is a search algorithm used to generate most likely sequence of tokens. The early stopping equal to true argument specifies that the generation should stop as soon as all beam hypotheses reach the end of sentence token. The tokenizer.token method is used to convert the generated summary from a list of integers back into human readable text format. The skip special tokens equal to true argument specifies that special tokens such as end of a statement or an end of sentence token should be removed from the generated text. The final summary is then returned from the function. Basically, this is the basic function that you need to summarize text. However, this summarizer has some limitations that come from the BERT model. One of the limitations is that it cannot summarize text containing more than 1024 tokens. So what I am going to do is I will split long text into chunks, then summarize each chunk, then combine the summarizations of the chunks, then create a new text by combining those summaries. If the combined summary is too long, then I will recursively split the combined summary to chunks and repeat the same process. Therefore, I will have summaries at different abstractions. Let us do that. Here I have written a function that takes a long text and splits the text into pieces of text containing certain number of tokens, preferably max token number of tokens. To make sure that one chunk has some overlap with the next chunk, I made sure that a chunk's last part has some overlap with the next chunk's first part. This overlap assures that the summaries of each consecutive chunk have some contextual connections. 
otherwise the summaries might look off context. This next function, recursive summarize, is designed to summarize a large piece of text by breaking it into smaller chunks, summarizing each chunk, and then concatenating. And if the concatenated summary is too long, the function calls itself recursively until the summary is short enough. I'm providing the code in a Google Colab. To save your time, I'm not explaining this function line by line. Rather, let me show how you can interpret the output of this program. In this example usage, I have a long text, which is a story, a story about two children, Amelia and Max, who go on an adventure to find a hidden treasure. The recursive summarize function is called with this long text and the function returns a final summary. The final summary is then printed out. Also, the recursive summarize prints intermediate outputs so that we can see the summaries at different abstraction levels. The final summary is at the very bottom of the output. Let me read it so that at least we have a good understanding about what this story is telling us. Amelia and Max found a stone in a cave and decided to take it home to show their parents. Their parents were worried but also intrigued by the stone. Their father recognized the markings on the stone as an ancient language. He believed the stone was a key to unlocking a hidden treasure. Therefore, this story is about a treasure hunt. This is a correct summary. Let us take a look at the previous level of abstraction in the recursive process. So let me scroll up a little bit. And here, this is level two recursion. So that means the function went up to the second level of recursion. And in the second level of recursion, there were two pieces. In the second level of recursion, the text was the concatenated summaries of the previous level of recursion. This concatenated summary was divided into two pieces. For piece one, here is the summary. For piece two, here is the summary. These two summaries are combined together and then summarized again in the next step, which we just read. Now, before recursion level two, we had recursion level one. So let's go to recursion level one. And we see that in recursion level one, that was our first level, there were six pieces. So that means from the original story that we provided, this one, this original story was divided or chunked into six pieces. For each piece, we have a summary. If you read these summaries, you will see that it really provides a good summary of that particular piece. Note again that consecutive pieces have some context overlap, some text overlapping that makes the summaries also connecting one with the next one. So all these six summaries generated from six pieces are combined together and sent to the next level of recursion because the concatenated text was a bit long. That's why more chunking was required to summarize the concatenated summary. So therefore, you can start from the very end, then go to the previous level of recursion and see what summaries were generated there. Then if you want to dive deeper into the story, you can go back to the previous level of recursion where you might have more summaries of more precise level. You can read those to get a better and deeper understanding about the story. And finally, if you keep going, if you go to the very top level recursion, the first recursion, then you will be able to see the actual story. So depending on how much time you have, depending on how much abstract 
obstruction you want. If you want a lot of abstraction, that means if you just want to know the topic of this particular story, then you just look at the summary at the bottom. If you want a little bit of more detail, then you go to the previous level of recursion. If you want even finer detail, then you go to the previous level. You keep going to previous levels as you want more and more details from the summaries. This code is an example of how you can overcome the limitations of modern AI in terms of number of tokens. The model we used has some hyperparameters which influence the outcome. Tweak the hyperparameters for your application. Human necessities generally influence technology. Sometimes humans may need to improvise and come up with new analytic techniques to overcome different limitations. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions or if you know of other free AI tools for summarization. See you next time.